Hi, my name is Jared Mello, and this is Mello Mentoring. Today, I'm going to talk about borderline personality disorder and gambling. But before I get into that, please do subscribe if you like videos about mental health, psychology, and relationships. Still working towards a thousand. It'd be awesome to be able to get that soon. And also check out my book, Radical Self-Respect, Avoid Falling for the Same BS, on Amazon now. But borderline personality disorder and gambling. And to preface, I've never been diagnosed officially with borderline personality disorder, but I've certainly met at times in my life more than five of the traits out of the nine to be diagnosed as BPD. So draw your own conclusions from that. And throughout my life, there's really only been one vice for me outside of women and relationships that even that ever came close to satisfying me. And it was gambling. Even if it was just using drugs or drinking, I still would then gravitate towards either gambling or women. But they call these process addictions, like love addiction, gambling addiction. It's called a process addiction. And for me, I used to love to gamble because it would put me into my fantasy land. And it started off with sports betting. I was really into sports. And I would start betting on football and I'd bet online and like I would become completely obsessed with parlays, teasers, individual bets. And just like the fantasy of being able to like make a lot of money from gambling. Like I was like super excited about it. I would get a rush. I'd get like manic and my heart would race and I would feel alive. It would self-medicate my depression. And... Like, when I wasn't doing it, I'd feel just flat. It'd be like Matt Damon's character in Rounders, where he would say he hasn't felt alive since he's been at a poker table. For the last seven months, he hadn't been to a poker table. And then he went to one, and he felt alive again for the first time in seven months. I could completely identify with that. And I think this is more than just a gambling addiction. And I had gone into debt because of sports betting. I put excessive amounts on credit cards, which was dumb, and then I needed to go into credit card consolidation programs to pay them off, and then I stopped for a while. I had gone to NA, and I kind of was relieved of that insanity for a minute, but then years later, I had returned, and the next time around, it became poker. Texas Hold'em became my fantasy, and I would drink some beers and then go play poker. I would imagine myself as being like a cowboy in one of the old western saloons playing cards with the boys and I would just play cards and it would be my time out from the world. Even to this day, I struggle with having zero fantasies. I struggle with having like zero escapes. At this point, I'll drink maybe once every couple weeks, a couple times a month, but that's it. But I still like to do that. I like to have that little bit of escape. And with cards, nothing else would take me away from reality and help me to focus on something in particular more intensely than poker did. I would be completely present at the poker table and the whole rest of the world would seem many, many, many miles away. And that was exactly my goal. I didn't want to think about the outside world. I wanted to escape. And poker, with a little bit of booze, that's what I was able to accomplish. I was able to escape. But of course, for me, it was negative then too, because I would be careless. I would spend more money than I had. And I would have the joke, it's not really gambling if you could afford to lose it. And then... At some points when I was gambling, I mean, I did become pretty good at cards, but when I would lose, I would rage and my temper would be crazy. I'd get this borderline anger and all I could do is see red and it would totally encompass my whole being. And it was completely overwhelming, this anger. Like I knew it was silly. I knew it was ridiculous, but I couldn't stop it. Like when I lost and I was triggered, I would be furious and it's kind of like a form of extreme competitiveness like I hate to lose and I love to win and that's everyone to a point but like I take it to an extreme 
And it's like Bill Belichick and Tom Brady in football. Like, they also hate to lose. And I think some of the best people or some of the best athletes and sports competitors, they hate to lose. And I get it because I was that way. So I would try to avoid those feelings, those angry feelings or the depression feelings I would get from losing. And it was terrible when I would lose. I would rage over it. But overall, it was just an escape. And I needed that escape because life with BPD would just become overwhelming eventually. And I would need to kind of escape. It's kind of like how Jordan Peterson would say how in The Little Mermaid, Under the Sea, I would need to go under the sea, becoming unconscious again. And when I would escape into my vices, drinking, gambling, that's what I was doing. I was going back unconscious, tuning out. And I think to a point, like, it can be integrated successfully without it being too negative to our lives. Like, I think some people do need to quit gambling completely because one's too many, a thousand's never enough, they can't stop. But for me, this is how I've been able to really help myself with BPD. Two things. My supplement routine, including Kratom, has really, really, really helped my impulse control. And... It's kind of been like a form of me integrating my shadow a little bit. Like, I used to be into heavy opiates. But now, like, I give myself a little bit. Kratom. Not even really an opiate. It's in the coffee family. But it gives me a little bit. It helps me tolerate my normal level of consciousness. And it works for me. And then, to fix the gambling itch, I've been investing in cryptocurrencies. Now, granted crypto more volatile than the stock market that's for sure but i put money towards cryptos i don't try to trade anything i don't do leverage trading i just invest and i hold and just seeing that number go up a little bit has scratched my gambling itch and it's a thousand times more productive than me going to bet on sports or me going to the casino to play cards now the casinos have been closed recently but even before that, I had not been going very much. And I may go every so often once the casinos open again. I might play a tournament for 100 bucks here and there, 150 play a cash game here and there. But I wanted to make this video today because I think a lot of people with BPD, they struggle with these process addictions. And again, a process addiction is something like gambling addiction a love addiction or a sex addiction. They are processes we become addicted to. But the reason why I was addicted to them was because they helped me escape. And gambling was the only thing that could ever occupy my mind in a similar fashion to women could. Because I, I was certainly a love addict too. But gambling was actually able to fill that void that I'd be able to not go chasing women around. I'd be able just to be good. And... Granted, it certainly had its negative consequences too, financially. The credit card debt, the going into debt consolidation programs, it was not very good. But it was serving a purpose in me. Like, reality was too much, and I would have to find a way to escape. And I think a lot of BPD folks can relate to that. But my challenge to you is, find something that can integrate your shadow into your everyday life. Because I get it, like there's, it becomes really difficult to not go all out into our vices. I've had to find a balance between I'm nowhere near as bad as I used to be, but I'm also not a saint. Like I kind of, I brought both of the worlds together. I have Kratom in my supplements and I have cryptocurrency investing. And it's like, it's just enough. So that I don't feel like acting out as much anymore. I don't feel like I have to go off the deep end like I used to and go really off the rocker. Because that's what I would do. I would be good for a while. And then I would go really off the rocker and like get extremely hammered and or do other drugs. And like I kind of needed to at the time though. That was the problem. Like I couldn't tolerate life. I needed those temporary escapes. And then what would happen is... I would feel bad about myself after the temporary escapes. And then I would really work hard to become healthy again, to become spiritually healthy again. But then I would go insane again at another point. 
And it's always like that Stephen King quote. We never feel our sanity leaving. We only feel its return. And that's what I would do. I would go insane, not feel it, act out on my vices, whether it was gambling or drinking or drugs or whatever. And then I'd feel bad about myself for doing that. And I would come back. I'd try to really work hard to get back to normalcy. And I'd really work hard to get spiritually okay again. Make amends if I had to. And I would enjoy the process of going insane and then coming back. Going insane again and then coming back again. And I can hear what you're saying. You might ask yourself, why do you continue going insane? Because what would happen is the spiritual wholeness, the just being good, would bore me. I would get tired of it and I would get restless. And like, it was a feeling inside of me where I'm like, Ugh. it's like kind of animal. The drummer from the Muppets who's trying to play drums to a slow song. He's like, ta, 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 ta. And then, ta, -ta, -ta, -ta. that was me. I wouldn't be able to maintain it. I would have to go wild out. And then I would feel better. I'd wild out and maybe mess up in some way, act stupid. And then I'd feel guilty. I'd feel shame. And then I'd come back. I'd come back just to being a normal person again. And then I would enjoy that process. And I would wash, repeat that process over and over and over again. And it hasn't been until I've been able to combine the two worlds that I'm living the most healthy and productive I've ever had in my whole life now. I'm 35 years old. I have a great supplement routine. I am investing in crypto, albeit volatile. It prevents me from gambling. And I exercise a lot. I do my affirmations. I do my positive self-talk. And I'm less depressed now and anxious now than I've been ever. And for that, I am forever grateful. But if you have NPD or BPD out there and you're into this gambling thing, I get it. I completely get that escape. And my challenge to you is think of a way to integrate it healthily. And it might mean not gambling at all, but it might need, like, give yourself permission to do something once a month. I'm not sure. Everyone's different. So what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. But I think it's really healthy to integrate the two sides together, the shadow self with the light self. And then I think that version of ourselves is the most evolved. It is the version of ourselves that is a combination of like our dark sides and our light sides. And that version is best able to function in the world. And we're able to be assertive. We're able to be a monster as Jordan Peterson would call it. And we're a force to be reckoned with. We're dangerous. Because remember, to be harmless is not virtuous at all. So, that's my video today about BPD and gambling. Please let me know what you think about this video. Can you relate? Can you identify? Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree with what I said? And with that, thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.